Okay, so now the problem I want to solve is I want to color the variables, not not in this rainbow color, but I want to color, color code the variables based on uh, within which scope that variable was declared. And in this language, how can we figure that out? Um, this uh, and, and this sort of because I am the inventor of this language, I can sort of whenever there are ambiguities, I can just make a decision about how that ambiguity should be resolved. So, um, so let's go through these variables uh, <laughs> that are currently in rainbow color. Um, let's have the pen in rainbow color too to match. Uh, so this variable body is clearly declared in the main scope. Uh, so is this. So anytime you have a variable assignment, uh, for the first time, because if you could assign to body more times after after the first time, and then. But, but the second time you do a variable assignment, that isn't the one that actually declared the variable. Uh, I, I made the conscious decision to not have to have a keyword like var in front of a variable name to declare the variable. I wanted this language to be more Python-like. Uh, and I, I yeah, I, I just didn't want to have to write the word var. So the way we can figure it out is the first variable assignment uh, to to that name within a scope it is 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 a variable that declaration okay so this this line is a variable declaration 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 uh, all of them following this rule uh, but a for loop also has a variable declaration within it uh, the for loop declares a new variable which is the loop uh, the loop variable uh, and that's important as well. So if there's a loop variable, it's a, a for loop, I should say. So rule number one, let's say, this is rule number one. Rule number two is there's a for loop. The loop variable uh, declares, declares a variable. Um, and then, whenever there's a for loop, we declare a uh, scope as well. Um, in in new in the newer version of JavaScript with the let and const keywords, you actually have lexical scoping, meaning uh, the blocks within for loops and the blocks within if statements can create a new scope within which to place variables. And um, whereas if you use var, that's a different story. Var, the var defined, the variables defined with the var keyword, they sort of get hoisted into the top of the function. So they, they always have function scope. Um, I want to follow the lead of the let and cons semantics. So I'm gonna say a for loop creates a new variable scope as well as an if statement. And in my programming language, uh, both of those things, in including functions too, uh, the, the, both of those things have a code block within them. So a for loop has a body, which is a, an AST node of type code block. So this is a start of a code block. This is a start of a code block. For an if statement, the same deal. That's a start of a code block. Even even with a function definition, that's a start of a code block too. So I can actually use that uh, in a uniform way, and maybe that can help it help me. Uh, let's see. Um, 
but within this code block, so let's start it by this for loop, uh, we have a another variable definition. Uh, so that that definition that variable now is declared within this for loops scope instead of within the main functions scope, and that that's that's uh, notable difference there and we want to represent that so the eye and the row should be colored a different color than the body and table and black back row and white back row uh, and then uh, so maybe the, this is red and this is magenta or something uh, and then we have a nested for loop which creates yet another scope so the J should be colored yet a different color. This should be the third color. And then the cell is a variable assignment within the for loop. So uh, that's also within the scope of this for loop. And so is char. Char is also a new variable encountered. And it's the first appearance of char is within the scope of this inner for loop. So it should be inside that scope. Okay. Uh, what about ambiguities? Let's talk about ambiguities. So what if I had this this I which supposed to be inside this scope, but I already had an I out here. Let's say I had I equals one in the body of the main function, but I am also declaring an I with this for loop. What should we do about that? Um, my plan is actually to not allow that, to just entirely disallow uh, shadowed variable names. So disallow variable shadowing, that's what it's called, uh, both from the scope perspective and from the nested function scope perspective. So what I'm also saying is when I have a a nested function and it's de declaring its parameter list uh, like well this parameter that that parameter name uh, that is isn't not allowed to be the same variable name as one of the variables that are declared on the outside in the outside scope okay so I, I'm planning to just completely disallow that. But in the case of when it does happen, what am I going to do? Um, maybe I might just throw an error for now and not worry about it. That's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. So, so what I'm thinking right now is in, in my traversal, uh, I actually need to... Uh, I should find the variables that are declared in this current scope. So like, I need to loop through to find these variables that are in the current scope. And then I need to recurse down to, to AST nodes that are nested and have their own scope. So maybe I can find that by seeing the code blocks that, that are nested within me. And then I actually need to pass in the set of variables that are declared here. Mm, and, and pass it into the traversal of the nested scope. Because what I actually need to do is whenever there's references inside of here, like for example, this one, this table is referring to a variable that was decide, uh, declared in the outside scope. So, so I actually want to color this table the same color as I colored this one, right? So I think I need to actually collect the variables that are declared on the outside first and then pass it in to the traversal that is going through the inner scope. Uh, to allow this to be recognized as a variable that's being declared on the outside and treated as such. So that's what I'm thinking. And that's going to be somewhat tricky, but let's try it. Um, oh, part of the reason why I'm doing these longer form videos is um, 
I, I actually think there's a lot of value to showing people the process of discovery and that's what I'm doing right now because I actually for this for this problem I actually have not solved it before whereas in in the other videos I've created most of the cases I had already solved that problem before and I'm just re recoding the solution that I had in mind uh, while being recorded uh, but in this case I actually have not solved this problem before and I I might run into a lot of trouble <laughs> as we go but let's see let's see okay so so this is the code I had uh, I or I have currently that colors these variable names um, in rainbow color but what I'm gonna do, so this traverse function is gonna start top down in the node and loop through all, all of the nodes inside this AST tree. And what do I wanna do here? I think what I wanna do is kind of uh, go through, perhaps if it were a, if it were a code block, or a program node because a program node and code block can kind of be treated as the same thing. Mm. I think what I might do here is to use the same skeleton, use the same skeleton, and let me think. Let me think. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it easier for myself by uh, doing a little bit at a time. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just go into the uh, go into the body of the main function and just collect. Oh, in order to do that though, I will need to already have traverse down to the function definition level in order to have done that, I believe. So maybe what I do is start working in here. And yeah, let me try that. Um, I'm still going to collect the variable names. But I think what I'm not going to do is to drill down to every single statement because this body contains statement number one, statement number two, statement number three, etc. Statement number four. I think what I'm going to change it to do is not for the time being, not to drill down into the statements that have yet another scope within it, such as the for loop, the if statement, and so forth. So I'm going to be more choosy about which ones I traverse into. Uh, let me try that. I can either do that at the function definition level or the code block level. But the code, the function definition contains a code block within it. So a function definition is this definition, okay? And it, within it is actually a code block that starts with this open bracket, okay? So I think I'm actually going to try to do this at the code block level. That's this thing that starts here. And yeah, and it's already iterating through each statement within the code block. So I'm just gonna be, uh, discriminate between what kind of things I want to traverse into. So I'm, basically I want to not traverse into the for loop uh, in this scenario. So if the child node type is not a for loop, I think I want to not, uh, not do it for other things that have scope in them as well, such as the um, if statement and the while loops. So if it's not a for loop and it's not a while loop and it's not an if statement, I think, let me see. I don't have a while loop in this program. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, this shows me all the possible AST node 
types. I just want to make sure I get the spelling correct. So this is while loop and I have if statement. So I want to exclude these three node types from traversal. So if it's not one of those three, then I do want to traverse and collect the results. And I think if I did this, then yeah, then I only are coloring the ones outside of the for loop. So, okay, that's this is going well so far. So the point is, all of these I want to color one color, but the stuff that are declared, the variables that are declared within this for loop, I want to color it a different color. How can I discriminate that? Um, perhaps I, I sort of need this color coding scheme, I believe, and maybe what I'll do is make an array of colors. Uh, those are these. Uh, I'll just make a global constant um, available. Uh, I'll call this maybe color code. I know Vim and Emacs users are laughing at me right now. I'm doing this so slow, but I don't mind. Okay, so color code. Um, I definitely didn't want to call this colors because it collides with this module name. Um, but I could have renamed this if I wanted to. Um, okay, color. this is the color code, uh, or maybe call it available colors. Um, okay, available color. Um, I want an identifier to identify the scope. So if, if we're at the top level scope, I'm going to name this scope zero, maybe. And then if there's one level of nesting, I'm going to name that uh, scope one. And then in this level of nesting, I'm going to name that scope two and, and so forth. <clears throat> So how do we know the scope number that we're dealing with here? Let me think about that. Um, maybe if we maybe we base it on the number of levels, although I could see a case where that doesn't really work out because this is a different scope from this and I don't if there's a variable that's declared inside this scope, I actually don't want it to be colored the same color as this one. So, at, the, at least that's, yeah, I, I think so. So I might need sort of like this, I, this counter, use, use this auto incrementing counter as an ID generator kind of deal. And then whatever that ID is, I do a modulus, uh, to the length of this array to pick a color for it. Why are there two grays? <laughs> okay, I only want one gray. Okay, let me try that. So I think what that means is the traverse function. Hmm, we may need some state. We need a ID generator function, I believe. So, uh, so let's declare a the current i or maybe the next id, and next id is gonna. We, let's start it at one. No, let's start at zero. Uh, because if we started at one, we wouldn't be able to get the zero indexed color. Oh, we don't want to use black. That would not make sense. Gray is, I don't also want to, don't want to use gray. Okay. And then let's make a function that is uh, assign ID. Uh, so if you assign ID, you're going to basically uh, assign out the next ID and then increase the next ID variable. 
So this is how you assign ID. Maybe I can just do it like this to be to be really clever. <laughs> uh, okay, so assign ID is a function perhaps that I can pass into the traverse function. And then every time I want a new ID for, for the scope, um, I'll just call this function within the traverse function. That's the idea. And then I'm gonna need to pass it to all these recursive calls of traverse. Otherwise, the stuff will break. Okay, um, so right now I'm thinking um, every time I push a result, instead of only pushing the variable name, I'm also going to push the associated ID. Mm. But I have to call this guy before I can get an ID. And I sort of also have to pass in the current ID as well, in addition to this assign ID function. That is kind of annoying because we're getting more and more parameters now. Mm, maybe I can cheat a little bit by moving this traverse function inside this main function so that I don't have to pass the assigned ID in. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna undo what I just did. And I said cheat, but maybe that shouldn't really be considered cheating so much. Uh, well, I don't know. You be the judge. So I'm gonna move this traverse function into the body of the main function just so that we can access this assign ID function without having to pass it in as a parameter because I want to reduce the size of this parameter less. But what I do need now is to, instead of passing in the assign ID, I want to pass in the scope ID, the current scope ID, which is going to be, uh, oh, the first time we're going to call assign ID to assign the first, the very first scope ID. I think so. Uh, and then, so this is the scope ID. And yeah, uh, let's, for now, we'll pass the same scope ID into the traversal, but there will, so, will very soon be cases where that's not the exact value we wanna, we wanna pass in because we want to change the scope at different points in time. But let's see what happens if we did this. Okay, so we still got this working as before. Proves I didn't break anything. Um, and, but now instead of I want to kind of try to use this scope ID uh, as the index into this colors array so that I can use the scope ID to pick the color. So every time I'm going to push a var name into this results array, I actually need to push the scope ID along with it as well. And that means I need to hunt now every place where I did a results that push there's a few places maybe like five or six places where i'm doing this i just need to change the way i'm passing in the thing so i think what i'm going to do is say no or maybe identifier or should i call this identifier or the node i don't know 
I'll call it node because later on I might want to change which which node we're talking about actually. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pass in the scope ID here. Um, and I need to do this kind of deal to each one of these results that push calls. And let's do that. Uh, where is that? Ah, by the way, uh, I'm using this, uh, this, um, what is this called? This is a shorthand in the new, new ECMAScript, new ECMAScript feature. If I don't, if I don't write out the colon for this object literal, it, this is, if I do it like this, it's this equivalent to if I had written this out, okay? Just in case you're confused about that. Uh, okay. So I'm just looking for all the places where I have results that push and I'm gonna switch it over to this new scheme. Oh, dang it. I forgot to put, because this, this one, I actually do need to write out the key and the value because they're different and I can't use that shorthand. Okay, I think I got all of them. I'm gonna do a search just in case to double check. So results that push, it's pushing an object now. Okay, in all these cases, it's pushing an object now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna console.log the results to see if it is what I expect it to be. Uh, well, that didn't work. Um, oh, that's because this uh, syntax highlighting thing uh, didn't work because I changed what a result is. So I think I can do this. That should fix that. Okay. And yeah. So, okay. This is looking good to me. Each, each node has a scope ID, even though they're all zero at the moment. Uh, I can change that very easily now. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is um, instead of doing rainbow color, I'm gonna base the color on the scope ID, okay? So because a result has a scope ID, I'm gonna use that to pick a color from this available colors array, like this. Uh, I'll do a modulus just in case we run out of colors. We'll loop back to the beginning of the array. Okay, so they'll get one of these are uh, color names, uh, but uh, the color name is actually, a, each of the available colors is actually a valid method name of the colors module. So I can just plug it in just like that. That might look funky to you, <laughs> uh, I'm making a method call using this index operator, but uh, that, that actually works. if you want to put a method name inside of a variable and call a method like that, that's how you do it. So I'm gonna hope this works. And also I'm gonna print out the new code as a result of that. And we get red because the first color is, or the zeroth color is red. So now I, what I wanna do is get uh, another the nested scope to sort of generate a new scope ID so that we can color it a, another color. When should that happen? Let me think. I think, um, I think what I'm gonna do is do this, do yet another traversal. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm gonna traverse the statement in this scope once for the ones that aren't block level code elements to just to collect the variables on the outside. And I'll do a second traversal for the ones that are block level. So, so if it's a for loop or it's a while loop or if it's an 
if statement. Then I want to um, I want to traverse now, but also. Let me think about it. Mm. I guess from the perspective of the nested things, they just want a new ID assigned to them. And I think I can just call the assign ID function here. Call this new scope ID. And they should they should get a new scope ID. Let me try this. This might work. <gasps> oh my god, that's amazing. Wow, that totally worked. Let me just double check that. Oh my god, that's that's way easy than I predicted that this would be. Of course, we, we probably still have to deal with the ambiguities, etc. That there's probably edge cases that this is not working for yet. But so far, uh, oh no, 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 no. We have problems because um, I actually want to color this table red because table was defined at the outer scope. And yeah, in the reference of table, it needs to match this, the color that was on the outside. Uh, so this is not correct. And also, this reference of I should be green because this is the place where I was declared, okay? And also this J should be colored yellow and so forth. So I think what we need to do actually is to collect all of these variables. After we sort of collect all of these variables to, to figure out what variables were declared within this scope, we actually need to pass them down to the nested traversal and to in order to let the the traversal at the next level test to see if for each variable reference it was declared in a previous scope or, or a previous previous scope so we actually need um hierarchical scopes so uh, let me draw this out. So we actually need an array of scopes, I believe. So scope one, scope one is, um, you know what? I wanna match the color that we're seeing right now. So I'm gonna pick red. Okay, scope one is gonna have body, Table, lack, back, row, and white, back, row. In it, okay, scope one has these four variables in it. Uh, in scope number two, I'll call that green. Scope number two, it's gonna co sort of collect, uh, before going into this nested for loop, it will need to collect all the variables that were declared uh, at it, its scope. So scope two should have i, uh, because that's the loop variable, and it should have row as well, because row is first was assigned in this scope. It was nowhere to be seen in the outer scope. So scope two should have I and row. Let me scroll to the bottom, just make sure there are no other variables assigned. Yep. And then scope three is gonna be uh, yellow. Scope three is yellow and it declares J. Cell. Char. Mm, I don't think I see anything else. Yep, yeah. and then, yeah, and so forth. I'm not going to do everything, but a, a lot of these scopes don't actually declare new variables. 
So perhaps we don't even need to assign a new scope ID for the scopes that don't assign new variables. Okay, so these are the, the although I, I know that this, this little function here, it does, uh, namely event is a new variable, but let's, let's not do that one for now. Um, okay, so these are the scopes. And what I'm saying is at, at the first level traversal, it's going to need to collect all these variables that are declared within this scope. It's going to uh, pass them down, actually. Uh, we're going to... No, <laughs> that's not what I want. Okay, we're going to take grab these variables, put in a bag, um, either an array or a dictionary. It's going to pass them down to the next level traversal. Um, so that the next level traversal, when it sees a reference like table, it can see and can look up this back and say, is it in the previous level? Was it declared in the previous level? And if it was, I actually need to use the scope ID of the previous level to uh, to color to color this variable here. Um, and then the and then the next scope actually need to do the same thing at scope number two. Uh, it needs to pass that down to the scope number three. And actually, we need to pass both of these scopes into scope number three because scope number three, it's, if it's referencing body, it won't find it here, it will find it here. So this actually needs to be an array of these scope objects. And also, I think we need to pass down the scope ID attached to these bag of variables as well. So the scope, so scope, ID for scope one is zero. Maybe I should have just called this zero. Uh, this is scope ID one and so forth. And then at this, the third level of tra traversal, it has to look at whether something is in here. And if it finds here, it actually needs to take this scope ID and use that to color the variable uh, when it's pushing that variable into the result array. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's try to make it happen. Hmm. That means we need yet another parameter. And I don't think there's a way to avoid this one. Uh, for the results, we could, well, I'm going to leave that one as is. So I'm going to make uh, another parameter. Let's call this uh, parent scopes. And parent scopes is going to, I'm, I'm going to pass in, because it's a new parameter, I'm just going to pass it in everywhere where I'm doing a recursive call. Okay, so we got parent scopes. This should still run because no, it doesn't. Because I need to pass in uh, some whatever that is. Parent. Oh, this still runs. Okay, all right. So I introduce a new parameter. Oh, by the way, this is a what what I did there is uh, I think it's instructive. Uh, I, I, I sort of introduce a new parameter without actually using making use of it. Um, but just sort of like I introduced the parameter uh, and then retested the program just so that I made sure that step, the, the introducing of the new parameter didn't break any of the existing code, that I did that correctly. And uh, yeah, you can, you can use the running of the program to test that. Okay. So now I'm going to say that this scope, I'm trying to model this layers of scope with an array. And each item in the array is going to contain a scope ID as well as a bag of variables. And I think I'm going to model the bag of variables as an 
probably a um, I could use a set like um Igma script set not M M M D N set. We could use a set for this actually, or we could use a normal object and then just have the key. Uh, have the variable name as the key and the value as true. Uh, and that would work just the same way. I think I'm gonna stick with the object just to um, just to reduce the scope of the information that I'm presenting inside this video. okay? So what what is um what is a scope object? So this is gonna be um, an array of scope objects. and what what is a scope object? Scope object looks like. It's an object that has um, okay. Scope object looks like this. It's an uh, ooh. okay. That's a comment. Scope object looks like it's a scope ID. Mm, it's a number. This is pseudo TypeScript syntax, I guess. Uh, and then the uh, variables, which is like that um, you know what I'm gonna use real values so maybe the scope ID is three and the variables is like body and I'll just put true as the values table true and I don't know black back row true and white back row true Okay, so uh, this is how I will enter the variables basically, um, and then if if we're doing multiple levels, then this array will get multiple of these scope objects. Okay, um, yeah, and okay, let's create these scope objects. So I think the place where I would need to create them is. When I'm doing this traversal, because it's it's the it's the child traversal that would need this information. So I'm gonna create the scope. So the scope at this point, it, the scope ID, scope ID, which is already here. So I can use this shorthand like this, and then the variables. Uh, the variables, I believe, I would have had access to in here. Oh, now this gets interesting. Uh, huh. Actually, want this re these results sort of not be passed upwards yet, or, or I sort of want to look at these results before I pass them, before I push them. So perhaps <laughs> I make a local results my results. This is nasty, but. I'm going to do this, and so if if I if I make this local results array to sort of oversee supersede this array, um, I'll get the results just for my scope. So, so yeah, so so like say this is we're doing it that at this scope. We'll get the results just for this scope, and then now I can get that information. But at the end. At the end, we will probably want to uh, merge the results. So maybe these are child results. <laughs> and then at the end, we want to merge them. Uh, and then results, I want to push dot, dot, dot. my results and also results that push that 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 child results this is kind of crazy 
uh, yeah or maybe I just in insert well I'll do this I'll do it, do it like this for now I don't I kind of don't like it but I'll do it for now because it's quick for given my the state of my code here this is a fast way to do that okay um, so now I think my result is gonna be uh, at this point an array so I may want to actually convert it to the this dictionary form I have sketched out mm, and okay to do that I'm gonna need to loop through the results bar identifier notes these are identifier notes of my results um, so I'll, I'll just say I s initialize it as an empty object but for each identifier node that I ident I, I encounter let's see what an identifier node looks like well it a, has a value and that's the variable name so I'll say scope that variables identifier that value equals true um, okay and that then that's enough to create this scope object and then this the scope object uh, will stick into an array to put into here so perhaps the the child parent <laughs> scope is gonna be um, scope dot 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 parent scope because if if there was already a parent scopes and then that's the thing we put in here as the parent scopes of the next traversal uh, yeah I think so I'm gonna try it I don't know if that's gonna work or not well it didn't change anything because we still haven't um, made use of that new information but what we might do is just take a look at to see whether this parent scope thing got accumulated okay let me see uh, oh shoot we got a lot of undefined true so we messed that up my results oh because I have to say dot node due to the change I made earlier because a result is an object that has a scope ID and a node due to Due to this change I made earlier, so I have to go into the node before the node is an identifier node. So now I believe, yeah, we got these scopes. So so at one point the scope was scope three. Oh, we started with scope zero, and it had these four variables. That looks right. And then we had scope one, which had row and table. And then scope two, which had cell and char and row, which is wrong, but that's because we didn't, um, at least I think that's wrong, but, but that's because we didn't loop through the scope to detect, um, detect the variables that were declared in the parent scope, which we'll need to do next, I believe. Okay, let's see that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. So what are we gonna do now? Um, I guess in order to figure, for whenever you find a variable reference, let's go to variable reference and possible and and for variable assignment as well. I'm actually gonna move them right beside each other like this I'll just test make sure it still works the same way I didn't 
break anything major. Okay. Oh, whoops. No, no, no. That was right. Okay. So variable assignment and variable references. We um, we're not necessarily gonna use the current ID. The sc not necessarily the scope ID of the scope of the traversal. As in, if we're traversing within this scope and looping through each statement within this scope, the 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 color we want to use to color the variable is not necessarily the scope ID of this scope because if the variable was declared in a parent scope, we actually want to use the parent scope's scope ID to color this variable. So it's it's these two these two blocks of code we need to modify to make it do that. So instead of using this current scope ID, we actually need to loop through the parent scope's array to see if the parent scope has this variable with this var name defined already. And if it does, we're gonna use that, that scope ID, the scope ID of the parent scope. So let's do that. Uh, I'll do it for var reference first, but the var assignment is going to do the exact same thing, I believe. So, uh, and looks like it's in, um, it goes in order of the deepest scope first and then moves up and then up and then up okay so i'm gonna start with traverse so i'll do loop scope uh, loop parent scope of parent scopes ancestry maybe we could have called this scope ancestry uh, okay uh, so so if and each parent scope has a scope ID. I'll just, I'll just write it out so that it's clear. It has a scope ID and it's got the variables. That's what we made in the previous um, code change. And then we'll say, well, if my this variable that is being referenced by this var reference if this guy is in the, the variables of that scope then that's the scope id i want to use and we can actually break out of this loop uh let's make a uh, scope id here hmm. <laughs> i might have scope trouble uh in here too, I, I think I need an uh, I think I need a new. Oops. Well, uh, well, you know what? So I'll, I'll call this this scope ID actually, and then when I find it, that's when I uh, that's when I set it. Oops, no scope ID. Okay, like that. And then I'll either use the scope ID that was found, or if it was not found, then I use the, the the this current ID, the scope ID of the traversal. Let's see if that works. No. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I know, because the shorthand doesn't work now. Now I actually need to spell it out. Key, value. Okay. I don't think that worked. Mm. I'm gonna see if it ever reached this point. By throwing an error. Hit. <laughs> no, it never, it never reached that point. Uh, why not? Let me see. Got variables here. Parent scopes. Did it ever hit this code? 
it must have okay I'm gonna do a log here try to debug this problem That's, I'm using the same variable name as up there. I call this parent scope ID. Maybe I don't think that would have caused the problem actually, but just in case. No, that still didn't work. No, I don't think that caused the problem. So hmm. let me see if it went into this for loop. There's two, oh, I think this is it. Let me see. I have too many printouts. Let me try to reduce the amount of printout so I can see the things I want to see. Uh, so let me get rid of this one and maybe this one. Okay, it did reach those points, it looks like. Um, let me see. I'm also going to print out which war reference we encountered. So we found this var reference, um, it's identifier i, and we're looping through this set of parent scopes here to find i, and it's not been found. I'll find another one that might be more, um, that where we might get a hit here that reference and this is on line 39 let me look at line 39 here yeah this reference should correspond to a elder scope it was defined in here let me see what happened here so okay we, it found this variable reference uh for the variable white back row and the parent scope the first one it encounters is this one and it should not find it in here. Uh, here, it, the, the variables, it should not find it in here, but it should find it in here. Uh, and it should have used scope ID zero. Um, but maybe it didn't work for some reason. And why would that be? <gasps> it's because I need to do that value. Because of our name, yes, I know. Var name is a object, not a string, and it's the string that we want to test against the key of the dictionary. Oh, well, in this case, yeah, uh, that was the mistake here. So I needed to do value. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe I should make a local variable. Like that. Okay, so I think this will make it work. I hope. Um, and I can see that if I printed out the colorized code, I think. Nope. It did not. Uh, it, didn't, it still did not work. Why? Not sure. I'm gonna put a print out here again. Oh, zero is falsy, and therefore it would be falsy. It would use this one. <laughs> Holy crap! Okay, zero is falsy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and therefore it will not be seen as truthy it will not be used and it will skip 
and default to the scope ID. So that we can't have that. Uh, what are we going to do about this? Um, I can test for undefined, so I can say is this guy is the type. Oh, is it triple equal undefined? I think that works. Is it triple equal undefined? If so, let's use the scope ID. Otherwise, we'll use that one. Okay, I think this should work. Yes! Yes, this is now red to match this red. Uh, okay, awesome. Um, but this is not working. This should match this color. Oh, because this is an assignment. So I need to do the same thing for the var assignment. Let me have, okay. I'll just do the same code here for the var assignment and copy and paste. Uh, copy and paste again. Ooh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so it turns out that this code is in the same scope as this code so we can't um we either have to rename this guy or re rename this guy or put both of them inside their own scope i'm gonna for now i'm gonna put both of them inside their own scope whoops what, what just happened and the way to do that without introducing an extra statement is just to do that. In JavaScript, you can just create an own, own scope by just using this block syntax. I don't know if you knew about that. Um, you can do it. I don't, I don't really like this though, honestly, but I'm gonna do this for this case just to get it working and I might refactor this code. Okay, let me see if everything is working properly. So yeah, so this reference to table is this should be colored red because it this variable was declared at this outer scope. So that's right. And then the second level scope is uh, I is green and it contains I and row. And whenever row is referenced, it should be colored green. Uh oh, this I is purple. This I should match up with this color and it doesn't. And this J should match up with this color, yellow, and it doesn't. So what gives there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but most of the stuff works. This, oh, this event, it should, this should be a new scope, and that didn't work. Okay, and this is red also, which doesn't make sense. The J, oh, this J isn't even colored. What the heck is going on? <laughs> okay, uh, wait, uh, is it just me or? Oh, oh. Okay. No? Okay. So, all right, th there's some bugs in this code, uh, and I'm not sure why, so I'm going to need to investigate. Huh. Let me think. Now, I could refactor this code because I don't like this duplication here, but usually before I refactor something, I get the code working first, and currently there are some bugs. So let me try to uh, debug this code. Uh, so one problem is that this I, uh, the SSI is a, this purple, but I'm expecting it to be green because I was declared over here. So what I could do is, I sh this should be caught as a var reference here. So, 
we can test for the case where that guy. Oh, really? It's this guy. I could extract this outside because it's talking about a node, which is not is is not related to each loop iteration. So I can declare it on the outside like this. Um, let me just print out the fact that we, we found. Oh, I only want to do it if var name is i. This is a poor man's poor man's debugger, conditionals debugger, uh, and let's go ahead and go ahead and print out the var name, the, the node. Let's print out the node, and let's print out the parent scopes as well. Let's print out the whole array here. All right, see what happens. Okay, we did encounter I several times, but the one we care about is actually online. <laughs> 22. Let's see if we can find one from line 22. Line 22, perfect. And then the next one is line 29. But we're, we care about the one on line 22. So the, the variable reference to i on line 22, that's this one. I want to find out why it was colored purple instead of it should be colored green, OK? So the parent scopes, where is it? Oh, this is the comma. Okay, I did a console.log here. Oh, I printed both of them. So it, the parent scopes starts at this comma. Oh, it didn't get, it only has one scope instead of multiple. That's a problem. It doesn't have the intermediate scopes. I do not know why. Why would that be? Uh, let me think about that. So the way this should get the scope, the 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 the, the, the sort of so the problem is the scope array only has one item in it. I think. Uh, wait, where's the open bracket of the? Oh no. Oh, oh, this is the scope object. Oh, never mind. This is confusing. I'm gonna okay, say so this is the identifier. I'll, I'll change the console dialogs that the print out so I can I can see this and you can see it easier also. So all right, these are the parent scopes at that point. So this is online twenty, the var reference to i on line twenty two, and it was encountered with these parent scope. And I, in order for it to recognize that i has been declared in a parent scope, it needs to i needs to be stated here, and it isn't because it has one scope. The first scope is scope ID two, and it has cell char row an event. How did it get event? That doesn't make any sense. Let me see. I, the only place I see event is here. I haven't written any code to deal with. Well, I'm not sure why event is showing up here. I have no clue, actually. Um, it's got cell and char. The cell is declared here, and char is declared here. That makes sense that it's current 
transparent scope has cell and char in it, but it does not make sense that it has row and event in it. So that's a mystery. And then the next scope above that should have row and I in it, but it has a row and table in it. Huh. And that's wrong. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, I think I understand. It's because I made a mistake back here when I was collecting. Okay. Whew. All right. Uh, here, when I was collecting all of the variable declarations inside of the top level scope here, uh, I wanted to collect all the doc variable declarations within the scope without drilling into the nested scopes first. But what I did wrong was I collected I use the this traverse function to collect them, but the traverse function collects both variable assignments and variable references. So, and I actually don't want variable references. So it collected table because for for this middle scope here, because table is a variable reference, but I actually do not want the variable references in there. And I'm pretty sure that's the cause for the mistake. And ouch, okay. So in order to fix this, I need either a separate traversal function that can grab me just the variable, just the variable uh, um, assignments and not the variable references. Or I sort of modify this function to have a mode to tell me whether to just get the variable references or just the um, uh, just the variable uh, assignments. I think I'm going to make a copy and modify it. Okay, uh, and you might be thinking that is insane, uh, but. Uh, But I think the use case of grabbing all of the um, assignments is easier. Uh, and and uh, the logic doesn't have to contain all of these things, I believe. Well, let's see. I did tell you that this was gonna be, <laughs> gonna be rough, so. Hmm. So traversal, uh, perhaps I call this guy traversal, traverse to get var assignments. And I'm gonna have to go and change each of these to call itself by the new name. I have a feeling I can simplify a, a lot of these. insane okay uh, so I, I basically made a copy of the, the that recursive function uh, just so that I can make a tweak in it and that tweak I want to make is that I actually don't want to collect <laughs> the variable references I just want to collect the variable assignments and I actually think there's a lot more simplifications I can make in this function uh, because there's a whole bunch of stuff I believe that I no longer need for the case of just grabbing the variable assignments. 
However, I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm impatient. I'm impatient, and what I'm gonna do is try to fix this problem. In a way, it's not necessarily impatience. It's just that I wanna. I have a. Um, we're still in a phase of debugging, and I have a hunch about what the bug is, and I actually I'm working to verify that hunch, my hypothesis, so to speak. So where was the code that I was looking at changing? It's this one. It's this one. This one where, again, I want to iterate through all of the statements that are not for loops, while loops, and if statements. And for that matter, uh, function expressions or function definitions, because those things also have scope. Uh, I think I should add that to this conditional list as well, actually. Okay, so I have a hunch that this is gonna fix the problem for me. Let's, let's hope so. Oh, whoops. Syntax error. Uh, I have this extra and and. Okay, let's see if that fixed it for me. Ah. Sort of? No, it didn't totally fix it for me. Dang. Okay. Um, let me think. Let me think. It colored this red. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and keep debugging. Uh, I, I want to base it on the bugs, the specific bugs I'm seeing. And, um, OK. That's, so this eye should not be colored red. So I don't want to figure out why it's currently being colored red. So again, I'm going to go to, well, I still have that statement that says if it's I here, print it out. So let me see. But this time I want the for loop statement. Uh, oh, that's not a, that's not variable reference though. This is part of a for loop statement, not a variable reference. So, whatever, okay. Hmm. So I think that means I need to, whatever code I added to, for the re variable references to look up the scope, I have to do it for the for loops loop variable as well, because that's not treated as a variable reference. It's treated as a variable assignment, in fact. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, this one, however, this row should, or oh, this is a variable assignment, though. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. All right, I'm gonna try to do this debugging trick for this this case, this row reference. But this is not a reference, actually. This is a um, this is actually a variable assignment. So I'm gonna do this exact same debugging technique here as I did for the variable reference, but I want to do it for the row variable, and this is on line 11, okay. There, line 11 for row. Um, and and the parent scope is, it does have row whose scope ID is seven. So 
I found the scope ID of 7. Did it? Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven should have been white. So it should have been white. Mm. So should I have found it should have used the scope ID of seven for the result then. Doesn't look like it did. Let me verify that. Okay. So I, I guess I want to know what scope ID it ended up using, which is this. Okay. Uh, so for this particular variable assignment, it used scope ID seven. It did. It did use seven. Oh, shoot! The scope IDs increased a lot, which means it must have looped through what? Wait, seven, seven wraps around, doesn't it? Because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is r again red. That's why this was red. Okay. Whew. Okay. So we wrapped around. Maybe what we do is add these bright colors as well as the background colors. Let's try it. It's interesting that the scope ID uh, increased to 27. That's higher than I would have expected. There might be a bug in there. Let's also use the background colors. Why not? There we go. Oh yeah, you can see this as lighter red than that shade. Uh, I'm just actually gonna put the background colors in front of the bright colors to get an even bigger contrast. If I can do it right. Okay, uh, let me take white out of the picture. And also <laughs> bright white, background white, background white. If you're gonna do background white, the text is not gonna show up. So go take the whites out of the picture. Okay, there we go. Oh man, all right. Uh, is this correct? Hmm. Yes, this row was defined here. And this cell is the cell char and this J. This J is still not correct though. The J should be, should have the blue background. The char should have the blue background as well. But this is correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's look at hmm, this variable reference. We have even more stuff to debug. This is this is a difficult problem. Uh, so let's debug this one. Okay. Uh, wait. This I, this I should be coming from here also. Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna go for this one because I have a feeling that the handling of a loop variable, uh, I might have 
I mean, I have done everything I needed to do to handle the loop variables. So I'm going to go with one that's not a loop variable. It, this is a normal character assignment and normal character, uh, or not character assignment, but variable assignment and normal variable reference. <laughs> Try to debug that one. So this is actually a, uh, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to go for or find, try to find the assignment to the variable char. I want the one on line 25. That one. On, the, on, the, on 25 and this should be have blue background like that. So let me look for the one on line 25. <coughs> Excuse me. It's this one. Okay. And the whole note, AST note, is that. And the parent scopes, let's see. Uh, it used scope 16. Uh, one problem is I don't know that what which scope a particular scope ID refers to. Hmm. Perhaps what we could do though is to color the brackets. Color the brackets with that scope ID. Boom. Right. Um, I think maybe. Char is declared in multiple scopes. I, okay, I think I get it. So it, it put char in the immediate scope. Okay, uh, here. Uh, so it put char in this Im immediately closing scope because this is a var assignment that assigns to char and put it in this scope. Uh, but char, but you can see that the the scope above it which is this one. Um, that, that one doesn't have any uh, variable assignments and therefore it has no variables. But the, the scope above that is this one and it does have cell and char. So this is actually correct. It's just that we, we, we need to sort of, in the case where the very immediate scope has a variable assignment to that, we actually need to uh, ignore it or not ignore it or perhaps not place char in here in the first place because char really should have referred to the char that was declared in the parent scope. So in other words, if there's a variable name that is in the parent scope, uh, we, we shouldn't place that same variable name in a child scope, even if there was a uh, variable assignment to that. So, and that mistake was made to, because that, the place where that happened was here. This is the thing that is collecting the variable assignments. And we're using this second function to do it. And here is the place that does it, and we should actually not push the result 
in the case we find a match in the parent scope so that's very very interesting so uh, yeah so I, I should here I should say actually say if we couldn't find the variable scope if we couldn't find the same variable being or if we could actually if we could find that variable being declared in a parent scope then I we then if we could find it we don't want to push so if we could not find it it was it would have been undefined then we do want to push okay uh if it so which means we don't okay that could be the shorthand now so if, if we could this means we could not find the variable declared in a parent scope that's what this means and then in that case we want to collect that variable assignment uh, but if we could find it then we don't want to collect uh, does that work this char is colored correctly now based on this color of the scope that's good I think the J is still wrong but the J is a, a loop variable and I mentioned that I probably need to do something more for the loop variables to work properly but the char and the black back row is working properly this row is also colored correctly based on where it was defined event is a different color that's delightful because it should be a different color cell we can see cell is colored according to what it needs to be colored okay uh, a lot more of it is working uh, the stuff that's not working are these loop variables um, okay we can we can debug those as well and then we'll, we'll, after we fix those we'll fix the uh, stuff within these inner functions as well but right now I've been working for too long I need to eat some lunch so I'm gonna take a break now <laughs>